Hello everyone and welcome to the CircuitPython weekly meeting for August 2nd, 2021. It's the time of week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. And of course, it is CircuitPython week all week. So I'm Jeff and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython, a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is sponsored primarily by Adafruit so if you want to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. The meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. The meeting typically happens on Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. We have uh, calendars online that will keep you up to date with any changes to the meeting time or date. We can also add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role, and then you'll get a small number of notifications each week, most of them about the date and time of the meeting. This meeting is recorded. We record the audio from the voice channel and video of the text channel. If you prefer not to have your voice recorded for whatever reason, you're still welcome to participate by providing notes in the notes document. Uh, the video is posted to YouTube, and the audio is released as a podcast. If you don't find us on your favorite podcast service, please let us know. There is a notes document to accompany the meeting and the recording. If you wish to participate but can't make it to the meeting, that's where to leave your hug reports and status updates. Uh, after the meeting, we also add timestamps to the notes document so you can use it to skip to the parts of the broadcast that interest you the most. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so it's good to have the option to skip around. Uh, before the meeting, we post a link to the notes document and pin it in the CircuitPython dev channel, so if you're looking to add your notes, that's where to go. This meeting is held in five parts, not counting this one. Next up is community news, where we take a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community, and it serves as a preview of the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. Next up after that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka, where we take a primarily statistical overview of the entire project, uh, looking at the numbers as separate from what we're each individually doing. The uh, next part after that is Hug Reports, where we take a moment to highlight the good things folks are doing and recognize the awesome people all around us in the community on Discord, GitHub, Twitter, and beyond. Uh, next after that is Status Updates, an opportunity to sync up on what we've all been up to. We invite everyone to take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing since we last met and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. And then the last part, if we have topics, is called In the Weeds. It's an opportunity for longer form discussions. These can either be identified during status updates as something that is uh, a little long for that format or something you've identified ahead of time. And that covers how the meeting will go. And with that, I will take my first time code and we will start off with community news. Uh, I said it is CircuitPython week all week and CircuitPython day 2021 is this Friday. Uh, so on the Adafruit blog and beyond we're featuring CircuitPython all week and on Friday we've got a number of events planned. So check the notes document for the schedule and if you know of more uh, let us know with the hashtag CircuitPython day 2021 uh, on Twitter. Let's see and it says here that Rick Leander is offering 75% off his Kindle ebook, 10 games for the Circuit Playground Express, all weekend from the 6th to the 8th. And there's a link to that on Twitter as well. A part of the Circuit Python week is a special Adafruit show until Wednesday, uh, inviting everyone to demonstrate their Circuit Python projects as part of Circuit Python Day 2021. Moving from headlines to projects, first up we have uh, a Twitter post. Testing code for turning an Adafruit macro pad into cruise control for KiCad. Rotary encoder under thumb for layer, trace width, or grid size. And then next, become Obi-Wan with an Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect. Easy to get CircuitPython running with sound and an Adafruit Stemma QT gesture sensor. Again, we've got a link to Twitter. And last up, for this extract but not for the newsletter itself, Tinker Stellar is an iPad app that helps one learn coding and data science with interactive tutorials or labs where one can edit and run code examples like Python straight away. No need to configure environments, download data sets, or rely on networking connection 
to execute code. And there is a link there to tinkersteller.com. The CircuitPython weekly newsletter is a community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are on adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. We like to highlight the latest Python on a hardware-related news uh, from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. You're invited to contribute your own news or project by editing next week's draft on GitHub and submitting a pull request with the changes. You can also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. That wraps it up for community news, and we will move over to the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. So to dive into the statistics, overall, in the last week, we had 31 pull requests merged by 19 authors. Some of the auth author names I didn't recognize right away were Andre Blue, Lucas Hadfield, Edrig, Terop. And uh, thanks to them uh, for their contributions, whether you are a new contributor or a regular contributor, you are helping improve everyone's CircuitPython experience. Next up, reviewers. We had 11 reviewers. Reviewing is the machinery that lets us take in these uh, changes from authors. And um, so it's important to grow those numbers as well. Uh, I haven't seen Carter on the list for a while, I feel like, and Deshapu, so thanks for coming around and spending some time with us. And finally, on the front of issues, we had 25 issues closed by 13 people and 17 open by 12 people. So it's nice to see the issues numbers trending down, but good activity um, on both sides in terms of number of people. Next, I will pass uh, the baton to Scott to tell us about the core. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, for the core, we had 13 pull requests merged from nine different authors. Uh, shout outs to Evil Dave 666, CD Wilson, Edrig, uh, and Camtom4080 uh, for those uh, new authors. Uh, Thank you to our five reviewers, uh, and I'd like to give a quick shout out to Microdev for doing more reviews. Uh, we have we have ten open pull requests. Um, nine of the ten are less than ten days old, so that's awesome. Um, we do have one last one that ha is for an ESP set of boards uh, that I know folks are still working on. So uh, thanks for them for continuing to take a look at that. Uh, Issues-wise, we had 12 closed issues by 6 people and 7 open by 5, so we're net down, um, which is awesome, for a total of 439 open issues. Uh, we have, this says 31 open issues for 7.0, but I just looked and it's actually 29 at this point, so um, we have still 29 open issues for the 7.0.0 stable release, so uh, please take a look at those if you want to help out um, and uh, test the... I'll skip to the end. Uh, we're, we're, we're fixing some bugs in 7.0. We're making lots of progress on the polish. Uh, please keep testing the pre-release versions, and if you do find things that you think should block the 7.0 stable release, uh, please file those issues, and we'll mark them as the 7.0 milestone as well. We want to make sure it's in, a pr in pretty good shape by the time that we get it out uh, as stable. All right. Thank you, Scott. I've been uh, putting the 7.0 Alpha 5 on a bunch of my boards, and it's working really well for what I'm doing. So uh, I awesome. appreciate uh, like Dan's work getting it out there and everybody who's putting the bug fixes in. So mm -hmm. anyway, but it's not Hug Reports. It is time for Katni to tell us about the libraries. Thanks, Jeff. So this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is Ad everything that begins with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, uh, along with some uh, fun extras like the community bundle, the Adafruit CircuitPython bundle, and our cookie cutter. So across all of these uh, libraries, we had 17 pull requests merged by 10 authors and nine reviewers. Uh, the oldest of those was 94 days old, which is excellent to see that we're still plugging away at the um, older PRs, and most of the rest were uh, four days or less, uh, which leaves us with 42 open pull requests, and that's again across all of those repositories. We had 12 issues closed by eight people, and nine open by seven people, leaving with us with 328 open issues. Um, if you are interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, uh, consider going to circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including the open pull requests and open issues. You can search the issues um, 
either by searching in the page for keywords or you can search by label. For example, um, uh, bug or enhancement is a good place if you're looking for something more complicated. Uh, we need to get better at curating the good first issue label. Right now there's only three uh, and I bet there's probably many more that would apply. Um, there is a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. So if you're new to that, don't let that intimidate you or keep you from contributing. And we're always available on Discord to answer questions. In terms of library updates, we had one new library in the last seven days, SCD4X, and a number of library updates that I won't read off. Overall, we're still continuing to work through updating all of our code examples, et cetera, to work with the breaking changes. Early thank you to Foamy Guy and Lee Samurai per Prey for all the work that they've been putting into this project. We're still slowly making it through older PRs, and as usual, if you're waiting on anything, um, waiting on us for anything, please ping. Um, there's always a lot going on, but we want to make sure that we can enable you to contribute. And that's what I have. Thank you. And to round out this session, uh, Maker Melissa will tell us about the Blinka stats. Hi. Uh, seem to have lost the window here. Give me just a moment. Sorry for the dead noise here. <laughs> Uh, okay, for Blinka, which is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. And MicroPython. Uh, and MicroPython, thank you. Uh, we had um, one pull request merged this week by one author and three reviewers. Uh, there are two open pull requests, and there was one closed issue by one person and one open by one person, leaving a net of 59 open issues. There were 9,815 Pie Wheels downloads in the last month, and there were 75 boards supported. Thank and, you. Yeah, thank you. All right, that rounds out the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka, and brings us to Hug Reports, which is the first of our two round robin sections. Uh, I will start out, then we'll go down the list alphabetically from the um, notes document. If I accidentally skip over you, please uh, call my attention to it in the text chat and I will come back to you. Uh, and if people are not present or don't have a mic, I will read their notes. So getting to my own hug reports, I had a big hug for Katni for taking the time to catch up with me in a chat last week. Uh, to Katni and Dan in anticipation of our YouTube stream on Friday. Uh, a big hug to everyone moving the core towards being ready for 700, especially Dan. And to everybody fixing up examples and guides for seven, especially Foamy Guy and Le Samurai Poupre. Uh, Foamy Guy, in particular, went above and beyond by actually trying to run the examples. So we found an interesting problem. I think that was on Saturday, and sat down together and fixed it. So um, that was fun, and just appreciate you doing that work very much. Uh, and with that, I will pass it on to Jerry. There's that button. Hi. Um... Let's see. Uh, yeah, Jeff, to you for uh, the, the new camera toys. Um, I'm looking forward to checking them all out. And uh, group hug to everybody else. Thank you. I'm the cat. All right. Uh, next is the hug report from Katni. So the first hug that I have is for you, Jeff, for an excellent chat last week. Uh, next up, Foamy Guy, for help with figuring out vector I/O and an alternative with uh, display.io.shape and for troubleshooting a bug in Vector.io with me. Also to Kmatch for helping figure out getting Vector.io to work. Uh, again to Foamy Guy and Le Samurai Per Prey for continued work on getting the example code and learn code updated for breaking changes. And finally to Dan for fighting the good fight with RP2040 audio. All right, thank you. Next up is Melissa. Hi, I wanted to give a hug report uh, to uh, to uh, Dan for the Blinka keypad review and for commenting the code well, which made porting easy. And hug report to Katni for the macro pad library and a group hug difference. Thank you. And now at the bottom of the alphabet, it is Scott Tan Newt. Hello. Uh, two hug reports for me. Uh, what? A combined one for Les Samurai Propre and Anne for going through all the guides and getting rid of the max size keyword arg that we no longer need. 
And a hugger for to microdev for doing more reviews. Indeed. Uh, all right. And next we loop back to Dan at the top of the alphabet. Hello. Uh, echoing what Scott said, I'd like to thank microdev for doing PR reviews and also working on uh, some existing bugs and issues and narrowing things down and submitting uh, fixes. That's really helpful. Thanks to Katni for testing my tentative audio fixes, which I put out there last week and finding some problems and the particular problems that she found are very helpful in narrowing down to figure out what the actual bugs are. And then I'd like to thank all the helpers in Discord again, which I do periodically because they are really, really, really helpful to the uh, people having, the new people and the not so new people having trouble with CircuitPython in various ways. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next, I have notes from uh, David Gloud, who is not attending the meeting today, who has a hug for microdev for fixing the use of all four RGB LEDs on the mag tag, and to Foamy Guy for the work on updating the Learn Guides for CircuitPython 7. And now I need to interrupt Foamy Guy as he finishes up his hug reports to uh, finish the section for us. Alrighty, thanks, Jeff. Uh, first hug report goes out to you. Uh, definitely appreciate the help with some of the issues that popped up with the ULab examples or MicroLab examples over the weekend. Um, echoing uh, what a couple of folks have said, definitely uh, hugely appreciate uh, Lay Samurai Porpe for help continuing to help with updating the learn guides and uh, library example codes for the changes for uh, CP7. To Kevin Thomas, uh, who put in a bunch of hard work on a DEF CON badge that turned out super neat uh, that they shared. I'll drop a link for that in a moment. Uh, also, they helped me by fixing or uh, by pointing out a couple of things that needed to be fixed in my tile map game guide. Uh, to Warrior of Wire uh, for looking into the uh, potential issue with Vectori, uh, Vector IO and then uh, proposing a, a fix for that in a PR. And then uh, lastly, uh, to Dan for helping me get an issue fixed up on a uh, MacroPad device that I had. And that's what I got this week. Thanks. All right. Well, I've got one last hug report that I skipped over. Uh, a hug to Hierofact. It was great to have you uh, working with us here in the CircuitPython community, but best wishes as you start your new job, which I think you had told me was today was the day. So big day for you. Um, now we move on to status updates. In status updates, we want to hear what you've been up to since we last had a chance to get together and what your plans are for the future. So it is also a round robin, done in just the same way as Hug Reports. And once again, I will lead off. So uh, last week feels like a bit of a blur, but I added more camera functionality and the little bits to other guides here and there. Um, I don't know if it was now two weeks ago that I added the... Uh, Hid stuff, I think it was. So maybe it was just camera stuff. Uh, anyway, this week is more of the same. I'm going to um, send a new one-page guide about using the camera with Adafruit I.O. to review. And then I am going to be looking whether there are any interesting things that we can adapt um, out of, I believe it's OpenMV in particular, maybe we can get some kind of rudimentary uh, object detection or QR code decoding. So just getting a feel for what's in there and uh, what we can lift to use for our own stuff. And uh, fun stuff, I think I mentioned this after we started recording, but there's a long overdue fence replacement going on right outside my window. So there's been a little bit of rattling noise from that, but it hasn't been too bad. They were right by my window uh, two hours ago and now they're halfway down the backyard. So progress is being made. And with that, I will pass it to Jerry, and then after that, Katni. All right, thanks, Jeff. Um, yeah, last week uh, was all fun stuff. Uh, I spent the whole week being being grandpa, so that was that was productive and exciting. And here comes the cat again. Right on cue. Uh, this week, I just got to try and figure out what it was I was doing before the last week, and get back to trying and test and break things as much as I can. Sounds like fun. All right, Katni, go ahead. What are you up to? So last week, I added the new library to the bundle. Um, Lamore wrote that up, and uh, so I took care of the final um, getting it ready for folks to use. Um, made a decision following a discussion with Jeff on his LED animation PR, and we closed it. Documented the MacroPad library in the main MacroPad guide. There's six, I want to say, but there might be seven new pages with demos, etc. 
uh, started some template cleanup, which involved getting more code bundle flied, um, creating embedded code for the analog in page instead of using a code element directly in the template page, updating rainbow code, uh, NeoPixel rainbow code to use rainbow IO if available and fall back to underscore pixel buff or Adafruit Pi pixel buff if necessary. And then updating the templates that used rainbow code to remove the individual examples and use the single template embedded example and deleted all the individual examples from the learning guides repo. Basically, what I had done because to import color wheel, you either used underscore pixel buff or Adafruit Pi pixel buff. Um, and we want the code to be um, tailored, is the word I'm looking for, to that particular board. So um, basically, uh, I had a starter example that was pseudocode that you would then update the pixel buff version, which meant every time I made that template, I had to make an example and submit it to the learn repo and then embed it in the individual <clears throat> template inside each individual board guide, which was not a lot of work for four guides, but it's definitely going to be a lot of work for 100. Um, so I updated that to use a pretty gnarly looking um, import statement that's got to try and accept, but it will no longer be necessary when seven stable is released. So it's going to be gnarly for a little bit and then that'll be able to be updated. Um, so less work, uh, cause you only have to update it once and um, it'll use rainbow IO in the end. So that's good. So this week, uh, finalize the template cleanup. Uh, the last thing to do is there's um, links to other versions of pseudocode in the template descriptions which is what you start with, like, for example, uh, an example that uses a button and it says, you know, choose the button pin. Um, so the rest of the example is there. You just put the button pin in and then submit it to learn. So stuff like that I can't um, put inside the template page. It has to go in the individual guide. And I, when I was doing the cleanup, moved a lot of the examples into folders. Um, so I just need to redo the links because the links that are in the template descriptions are invalid now. Um, I need to think of what I want to do with my macro pad in terms of shortcuts. I took um, some previous code and um, got it to where the macro pad is rotated 90 degrees and the each row of keys, the shortcut for that is displayed on the screen um, in a section with a line between them. It's a little bit like it takes a little bit of getting used to because you know when it's upright, you can just put the exam or put the shortcuts in exactly the same form, like layout as the keypad. And that's not possible when it's rotated 90 degrees, but I really like the look and feel of it in 90 degrees. So um, I have the basis for it. I just need to decide what shortcuts I want to do. Um, also, it lights up the, it highlights the shortcut when you press the key. So that's super convenient. Um, I need to add the two new Stemma uh, RTC boards to the current guides for each one once I have the hardware in hand. Should be here tomorrow. Um, in this case, normally when we do Stemma updates, we kind of wipe the original from the guide um, and say like, hey, there's two versions of this. You know, there's like this old version that you might have, but here's the new version. But in this case, both of these boards are still highly, well, and the Stemma ones are new, but like the old one is highly used. So it's not a replacement. It's actually a new product. So the guide will be a little bit different because it'll still have all the references to the original version um, for both of those. And then uh, also updates for the Stemma stuff. I need to work on some new templates and also getting current templates added to guides. I will be prepping for a CircuitPython day chat with Jeff and Dan on Friday. I think I'm going to cover the MacroPad library um, and stuff you can do with that. And in terms of, uh, to echo the fun stuff, um, our AC is dying, and so we have someone out for an estimate, and also it is very warm. So we'll see how long it takes to get that fixed. Uh, and that's what I've got going on. Yuck. All right, next we have uh, Maker Melissa, and after that, Scott. Hello. Last week, I wrote the keypad module for Blinka, uh, reported that over. Um, and I started working on a guide that uses remote procedure calls from the macro pad to the computer to interface with Home Assistant. And I'm just trying to get uh, the Home Assistant settings tweaked so it does what I want. And then there will be lots of writing. Uh, I also worked on some small fixes for the web serial ESP tool that were preventing it from working with the NVM generator code that I wrote. And um, 
this week I'm going to finish working on the micro pad guide. Uh, make sure that NVM generator code is wrapped up and in the working state. And then I also need to look into an issue with the latest Raspberry Pi kernel breaking things again. And that's it. All right. And what do you have for us, Scott? Hello. Uh, so I'm diving back into the BLE workflow stuff. Um, as folks who watched my deep dive on Friday saw, I'm like, I've got these really weird assertion issues that happen when I do debug builds with link time optimization on as well. Um, I think I was doing that because I was trying to figure out issues with non-debug link time optimization builds. Um, so I'm going to take a look at that with fresh eyes today and see how far I get. And if, if I'm not able to make some progress, my plan is to like take a step back, figure out where I'm at, what I have to work on, and, and see if I can't get going forward some other way. I know Dave, Dave P. was kind of looking at this stuff too, so maybe uh, maybe he saw some things there that... That makes some sense. Um, I also found this issue using the code.circuitpython.org uh, on Android over WebBLE where it's getting extra ser serial characters sent from the device um, that are like garbage characters. So it's, it's a bit weird and I'm not sure why that's happening. So I'm going to take a look into that uh, because I'm trying to get back into this BLE workflow stuff. Um, Antonio, who we work with on iOS, is, should be back this um, month, so we're really going to try to hit that hard this week. Um, so that's kind of where my focus is. All right. Uh, back up at the top of the alphabet, we have Christian Walters. So uh, good to see you. Having, it's been a little while, I think. Um, would you like to unmute and read your notes, or did I need to read them? Hold on just a second. You may need to be added to, you know, you're in the correct group. Um, I don't know what's going on. Why don't you try leaving the audio and returning and see if you can unmute then. And meanwhile, I will go on to Dan. And if that doesn't work, I'll read your notes for you. So go ahead, Dan. Okay. So I'm working on um, two major things for 700. Um, I'm revising the HID API to be a little simpler and also to support some more things, some more kinds of HID devices. And there was sort of an issue we discovered in the past about, uh, I can't remember it's iOS or Mac OS, uh, whether they support devices without, with a report ID when they're the only, there's only one device. They seem to be persnickety about that. So I have to test that again to see if the code the workaround code that I put in is still needed. And otherwise, I'm working on uh, a lot of things having to do with RP2040 and to some extent SAMD51 audio issues. Um, we've done some testing with that, and I've made some changes which improve some things, but there's still some very odd things going on, uh, which are not necessarily directly audio right now. But for instance, background tasks stop running uh, after playing audio twice, which is really strange. So I've got to debug that. OK. All right. Uh, Christian, any luck unmuting, or shall I read your notes? All right. Uh, well, hopefully you'll come back and we can give it another try soon. Uh, anyway, Christian writes, last week attended EuroPython online conference. There was one talk about CircuitPython. I gave a MicroPython-related lightning talk myself and there is a link to a pull request into the newsletter if you're interested in the details. And this week, apparently my git previous traceback editions broke writing of bootout.txt. We'll take a look at that, and that is issue number 5062. And uh, now to round out the section, we will finish again with Foamy Guy. Alrighty, thanks, Jeff. Um, for last week, um, I worked on updating learn guide code, uh, knocked out all of the micro lab changes, uh, which was a lot of fun because I hadn't run a bunch of those examples before. So it was really cool to see the way some of those work. Um, also got in a few more of the max size and on disk bitmap uh, updates as well. And there will be some more of those coming this week. And we still have a decent list, but I'm hopeful that we can uh, maybe knock the rest of those out this week. Um, I also started working on some sample code for uh, vector IO and display IO shape. 
uh, with the hope being to get it refined and add some supporting text to tell folks how to use them, and maybe we can get that put into the display I.O. guide. Um, for this upcoming week, uh, I'm gonna be testing the vector I.O. PR tonight. Uh, there's PR to fix rotation, uh, so I'm interested to see how that's going. And then uh, I'd like to look into an issue that I've noticed with the turtle library that is possibly related to the on-disk bitmap updates or possibly just revealed by those changes. I'm not, not sure the root cause yet, but I'll be look, digging into that a little bit this week. And then uh, the last one for me is on uh, Circuit Python Day. I am uh, going to stream on that morning, so 11 a.m. Eastern. If folks are interested in watching while I work along on some libraries or projects, uh, I'll be streaming that day. And that's what I got. Thank you. All right. That wraps up status updates. And we will head to In the Weeds, where I have the one topic. And uh, I think Katni has already responded to it. Um, so. I want to write a driver for the PCF8563 real-time clock as found on the Ciduino Zhao expansion board. And I wanted to know whether to contribute it to the community bundle or the CircuitPython bundle. And um, so I, there's the Adafruit bundle and there's the community bundle, but I thought we kind of created this third thing, which was a bundle within the CircuitPython organization. And that was the alternative I was not sure about. So I'm not sure, Katni, if you want to uh, respond to that. And maybe I'm calling things by their wrong names. So I didn't realize we had to, to, um, third, third party for lack of a better word, uh, bundles. I thought it was just the community bundle and the Adafruit circuit Python bundle, which is what I thought you were referring to. Um, I know we were planning to move the community bundle to the circuit Python org. Is that, Oh, did maybe that happen and that's what you're referring to. Maybe I'm confused. Well, I, think we, I, I think we talked about having a CircuitPython bundle as well. The, the, the distinction that I was hoping to draw was that the CircuitPython.org bundle is for things that more than one person is supporting. Right, that's what I uh, thought it had nothing like, to do with. Yeah, like we, we collectively want to support, like the graphics team that we have kind of under the mm, CircuitPython.org okay. is an example of that. Yeah. Like, if there's multiple people who are like on the who want to collaborate on supporting something, then I would put it in the CircuitPython.org bundle. Otherwise, I would just put it in the community bundle. All right. It probably makes sense to put this in the community bundle then based on that, because I don't have like a co-collaborator or uh, anything like that. I mean, ideally, Cduino would have their own bundle that they supported their products on, but you know. Well, I'm not here to fight that fight. I'm here to make a board that I picked up work. I think we've 100%. all been there. <laughs> um, all of that said, uh, I still think it's worth just, if you do it, ping Lamore. Uh -huh. Um, on the off chance that she's like, oh yeah, we're totally gonna, I'm, I'm planning on buying a thousand of those anyway. Well, I Let's... think uh, this is the I one think... I kind of mentioned in the meeting and yeah. Right, I know she didn't say anything, but like you also didn't really commit to writing the driver. You were sort of I was like, thinking hey, I might do yeah. this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I'm saying, if you do it, right, just find out whether because we do have a few things in the Adafruit Circuit Python bundle that are either stuff we may eventually support or stuff that Lamore doesn't mind supporting. Well, right, like the OV cameras. There's no Adafruit product with any of these yeah. cameras in them. So, so that's that's why I'm just saying like it'll take you two seconds to ping on Slack. Like that's right. that's all I'm I'm getting at is if you do this before you pop it into a particular bundle, just ping and say, hey, do you want this in the Adafruit bundle? If not, I'm I'm tossing in the community mm -hmm. bundle. Done. Yeah, although we could also move it after the fact, and it would disrupt mm -hmm. yep. oh, me, the one person who's installed it ever, <laughs> to do that. right. But I'm just, I'm just saying that mm -hmm. would be my that's yeah. my suggestion. All right, that's no, that's a very concrete and helpful thing to do. So, all right, anybody yeah. else have questions about the three or more bundles in the world, or shall we go ahead and wrap it up? There's a discussion of the draw protocol going on uh, in the text chat with Warrior of Wire and Foamy Guy. Do you want to move any of that into voice in the weeds? Warrior of Wire is not in the... Um... Warrior of Wire is not in the, in the chat. All right. Well, if you're yeah. interested in that, um, I guess read the text chat. So in that case, I will wrap things up for the official meeting. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for August 2nd, 2021, CircuitPython Week. Um, <sighs> words. 
The next meeting is on uh, August 9th at the regular time of um, 2 p.m. Eastern time, and I suppose that's 10 a.m. Pacific or something. Boy. Um, thank you for everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us who work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Thank you, Scott. Um, the meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. This meeting is at a particular time each week, but uh, there's chat going on 24-7, no matter your time zone or when you prefer to be awake. Uh, to be notified about this meeting, though, and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the Circuit Pythonistas role on Discord. We hope to see you all next week, and we hope to see you throughout the week for Circuit Python Week and Circuit Python Day on Friday. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.